What do you think really happens after death? Words don't do anything, it's permanently night. I won't feel anything. I'll be laughing with you when you die. You can now play as Luigi. I don't have anything new to add to this thread, I don't know what happens when you die. All I know is that my mum died a few weeks ago and that I really miss her. The survivors feel sad I guess is a thing that happens after death. Decomposition. They clean the hospital bed and let another patient in. You visit the machine elves. Insert 25 cents to continue. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. You wake up in a cart trundling along a mountain path, you look up and one of the other passengers says you're finally awake. I walk back home and find a strange book the handbook for the recently deceased. What could be worse than existing forever? I'll be happy with nothingness. You get reincarnated into a different world as an ops slime. ITT, atheism and trying hard to make death seem pleasant. I had a near-death experience at 19 where my heart stopped for several minutes, TW, failed attempt at taking my own life, and I had an experience during that time that shaped my spiritual beliefs from then on. Lengthy to explain but I believe in a sort of delayed reincarnation souls move on together, though their roles may change a brother or parent may come into your next life as a mentor, partner or even a pet. I'd say nothing happens. You die. Period. You can now play as Luigi. The people that love us will miss us. Keanu Reeves. We ascend to a place that's part of reality but inaccessible to us now, like a fourth dimension, from here we can see it but it can't see us and we can't interact. We regain a connection to something greater, a consciousness made of everyone. We then choose a new body from a few choices, and enter it to begin the next life. We enter it when it's already a couple years old, and lose that higher connection but gain the consciousness of that body. It feels like we've simply awoken from a dream, and have always been the person we are now. This is why kids sometimes reference past lives, because they remember parts of that dream, and why you can't really remember anything from your first few years. This concept is a combination of my own experience, having died in a dream, stories of the strange things children say about what happened before their birth, and an interesting short story about the universe being an egg, with every person being the same consciousness at a different time, experiencing trillions of different lives, so that they'll be ready to hatch. I think death will be the most psychedelic experience one will have. Also I have a feeling heaven and hell is based on perspective. Perhaps when you die, you briefly take the point of view of all of the people you have ever interacted with in life, and that heaven and hell is how you treated them. You go to another dimension. Your body decays, that's what happens. As many gurus have said, do not discuss things not yet in your experience so I don't speak on things such as death. Human imagination is a truly powerful tool but if we try to conceptualize something we ourselves have never experienced or understand past a certain point, it only creates anxiety and worry. I've learned to accept that which I don't understand. There was a period where I could only think of death and it consumed my life for a week. Just day in and day out, all I thought about was death. I wondered where I would go, if life really even mattered and my entire world shattered. I lost motivation, became suicidal, and I felt a numbness over my entire body, my spirit had given up. I read Buddhist scriptures, watched gurus speak, and sought the meaning of my own existence for weeks and in the end the only answer that brought me peace was acceptance. Accept that we as humans can't understand something that is not in our existence. Whether or not we will see loved one again or if we are conscious after death, we just don't know. I still struggle with the idea of losing my own mother and brother but this is what we call life. All things are impermanent, it is the nature of our existence. Our ego believes that it is more important than the nature of existence so it tries to rationalize and understand death. I believe to become at peace at death we must live. This is a time to live our lives, there will be time we will die. That is conclusion. When death is near, we can only accept it so we should apply the same logic and just live. 
death will come and only then will we understand it but until then we should live and live gracefully and beautifully. TL, Doctor, I didn't really answer the question but now is the time to live, to experience, to feel. Death will come that is why it's called the end. Until then we should live gracefully and beautifully. I signed up to answer this. Here's what happens, don't shoot the messenger. As one is dying the angel of death, Azrael, comes with other beings and sits near the head. The soul starts to depart the body from the feet upwards, until it reaches the mouth and leaves through it. Depending on how one has spent their life is the scene they will see, a good person will see beautiful faces, or the faces of someone beloved slash dear to them, the not so good otherwise. This also applies to the difficulty in the soul leaving the body, it's not easy, but levels differ between people. If anyone has witnessed a person who is sedated, semi-conscious, or relaxed die, they may have witnessed them sitting up suddenly, from lying, and or almost panicking, with hugely widened eyes, this is because of what they are witnessing in their final moments. The soul then ascends, a lot follows but I'm not going to go into details here. Once a body is laid in the grave, the soul is returned to it, the person can hear the footsteps of the mourners leaving. It's important to note that we are not talking about this happening in our physical world, but in spiritual sense of maybe different dimensions, therefore, there is no sense of suffocation or being unable to breath. The person is then sat up by two beings, and asked questions about one's life, this is when the reckoning begins. This is the same for everyone regardless of what slash who they believe. Our souls were all created at the same time, and lived in slash on a completely spiritual plane slash level, then when our lives were destined to begin we were moved to our fetal bodies. From then on we have no consciousness slash awareness of anything else, we just start our lives. And for those who are going to argue about God, Although I really don't want to, one thing I will say. This isn't Neverland, not believing doesn't make him disappear, or change what will happen. I will probably be downvoted, because tbh it is really scary, but I would rather be prepared. Wishing you all a long and fruitful life. Didn't read many comments so if it's already been said oops. Maybe. If your life flashes before your eyes before you die then is it possible for you to die? I mean, to everyone else you are dead because that is what they have experienced before they die but for you or me, am I dying right now and just reliving my life? To the dying me, it's happening in a flash but to the me that is reliving that life, it is happening in real time. Will I reach that moment of my life just to relive the experience of seeing my life all over again? If that's the case then I've thought all these thoughts before. Is it possible to do something different? I'm more curious if this makes any sense? And even more curious who's thought this before? In any case, if I am going to be stuck in this loop, then I'm gonna go do stuff that will make me enjoy reliving it. Later. In me and a family member's opinion, we think that life is really all just one big dream of someone that we all joined, and all events are things that person dreamed of. Once we die we wake up back to those bodies we used before entering their dream, and we can go on to make our own dreams afterwards, basically we're all gods that chose to basically be beta testers and afterwards we can make our own that can be beta tested if we want.